Hello everybody, Thy Lord Root here, and today I want to go over something that I was very confused about when I first started messing with it, and there weren't that many videos when I started looking into it, so now that I've understood it a bit, I want you to basically get an idea of how you might fly rockets in Ferrum Aerospace Research. Now, I do have other mods installed, I do of course have um, remote tech and also deadly reentry, but I'm going to focus on Ferrum for now, and I'm going to show you a stock craft, or a craft that you might fly in stock. There are some things that stock teaches us that really do not apply in a realistic environment. So, for instance, we leave the nose cones off because they incidentally add weight in stock and don't bring much benefit. And we might put fins on our stock craft, but then again you might not. Sometimes they're not necessary. And we have the engine gimbling here. And so this thing is tuned to have a takeoff TWR of 2.0, which is about right in stock that would get us right about where we needed to be to remain near terminal velocity and then um, you know we'd leave these flat that's not the only thing that we do differently in stock of course there is this particularly tricky thing that we do because the atmosphere is so dense in stock near the ground to where we will climb to an altitude of something like maybe 10 kilometers in turn. And that generally works for us. Now I want you to take a look over here at this far flight data. fact that we had such a high Q coming in, and the deal with max Q is that our Q value is a measure of dynamic pressure, and our Q at any one time is one half rho times V squared. Well, we know that there's two minima there, right? There is a point where we're not moving at all, where Q is zero, because velocity is zero, and then there's a point where we're out in space, where Q is zero because rho, the density, or the local density, is also zero. And so by using Rolle's theorem, we can determine that there's this point called max Q, 
a max Q is where the most damage to our aircraft can occur. We want to get through max Q probably as quickly as possible, but at the same time, we don't want max Q to be all that high. So we'll go back now, we'll revert this flight to the vehicle assembly building and let's make some tweaks. So I'm going to load a craft that is more suited to FAR. If I can find it here. That would be this guy right here. Now you'll see that we've actually got a little bit more Delta V in our launch stage. That is possibly because of the fact that we put these nose cones on there, and they actually do something in FAR. Because FAR will actually calculate your aerodynamics based on the shape of your craft. And so this isn't maybe the best craft, because we do have sort of this pancake thing going on here to where, even with the nose cones, where um, they would generally go ahead and, you know, increase the cross-sectional area here, and that's no good. But it's better than nothing, and it's better than the other craft. And there's other things here as well that we want to do, like, for instance, we have the center of lift. Of course, we know from planes that the center of lift needs to be behind the center of mass. And it is, but it's better if our center of mass rises. So heavier payloads on larger rockets tend to fly better and far. With that having been said, we need to actually think about our approach, because the 10K solution is not working for us. And you'll notice I called it a so-called gravity turn. That's because, in reality, it's not a gravity turn at all. What we really want to do is after this thing stabilizes a bit, we want to first of all bring down our thrust to weight ratio. I brought it down to 1.3 or so compared to 2.0. And then on top of that, we want to begin turning earlier. So, what we'll do here is we'll wait until we get to about 60.
is going to be a good thing for us. Because we want to make sure that no matter what we do, we do not deviate more than 10 degrees from the road. That's part of what caused us to spin out of control in the first place. I'm just going to try to make some very subtle corrections to the inclination now. And you'll notice, by the way, that we will spin around. When we do this. But that's not generally a good thing to happen. Two hundred K or not thirty two hundred K, but three point two kilometers per second of delta V will be enough to get you into orbit. You can see we still have a lot left. And that was in a stage that combined with that outer portion had something to the tune of maybe oh I don't know, like it must have been like 4K. We've got over 700 left. Let's go ahead and attempt to circularize here in a bit. And we'll do that like we normally would. We are almost there and you can see we're about where we'd want to be for our Let me just get rid of this guy real quick, because it's in the way. We're about where we want to be, more or less. It's not the most efficient thing we've done, but it does work out pretty well. And we've in fact got plenty of Delta V to spare. So, now that we've done that, I think I will revert back, and we will discuss another problem that'll pop up, because, you know, the man's craft are actually aerodynamically stable for the most part. We don't really have to worry about that. What about something like this? We're on a fairly heavy launcher, so we know that this guy really should have an easier time launching. And then we've got this heavy payload here that's really oddly shaped. And that could be an issue for us, maybe. Let's see what happens. Basically, 
we will um, go ahead and try to launch it just without anything preventing the air from hitting that flat dish and that's kind of weird fine control by the way does really help with this with getting these precise movements done and in some ways it'll keep you from flipping over but I've got this at a fairly decent Oh, thrust to white ratio, again about 1.3. And this stage is dramatically over-engineered. But that'll be okay. Well, let's try to repeat this. We are now getting up to that 60... 60 meter per second mark, and we will begin moving over. Let me bring up the far window as well. Again, we're beginning to develop a lot of dynamic pressure from this. Presumably because we got so many flat surfaces. no choice but for the air to strike that oh that parabolic dish that create a ton of pressure for us and by the way max Q is not really something that's set in stone for all, all rockets every rocket will have a different max Q and that depends on a lot of things because your velocity changes as does the density. And it depends really on how you fly the rocket. But additionally, I'm going to take this off real quick. Additionally, how you will you know, what your, how much mass you have on there because that affects your velocity and what your thrust to weight ratio is and everything like that. Now this is a really shallow launch. I'm going to try to bring it down a little bit because, or rather it's steep. Steep is okay though. I mean, you want to be, if you have to choose between steep and shallow. The good thing about steep is that you'll get out of the atmosphere quicker so you won't have to contend with it as much. You can see that this maybe isn't as efficient as we want it to be. We certainly do have issues with control at this point. And that is even with that SAS on. Now sure, I mean we can we can get out of here okay, but we may just as easily run out of fuel. So, in reality, getting the sky into orbit is not going to be easy. I'll just let it do its thing. This thing might have otherwise broken up in the atmosphere, depending on... Oh cool, we can go to the moon if we want to. It actually is really cool. Yeah, oh, uh, that's maybe not the best way to approach it. However, if you have the procedural fairings mod, 
And what you can do is you can actually put a fairing around this. That's what I've done here. Exact same craft. The only difference is if we come up here, this guy is in a shroud, a payload shroud. Now, I believe that the elliptical one, which you'll find, you have really two kinds of fairings here. You have this conic fairing, and then you have an elliptical fairing as well, this egg-shaped fairing. I believe this one may be marginally better than the other, although I'm not entirely sure of that. But let's go ahead and launch it. And this time, let's watch Q and see what it gets up to. And I'll just turn on fine control here so that we have an easier time controlling this rocket. We're about stable, so... We do have a little bit less... Oh. TWR. As long as it doesn't go below, uh, below 1.2, you'll be okay. But, oh, uh, you really don't want it to go much further than 1.6, as I've stated before. That's where stuff really does begin to become a problem. Well, anyway, we're about to pitch over here in a bit. I didn't pitch over exactly when I needed to, so I'm going to go ahead and get this guy to 5 degrees as quickly as possible. My rule of thumb is to get it to 5 degrees near... 100 to 120 meters per second, then to 10 degrees soon thereafter. Although that's not really set in stone anywhere. The important thing is going to be that our time to apoapsis keeps on rising. Now I do want to warn you, since I am in a remote tech game, Something quite disastrous can happen here. Yeah, there we go. I think that's good enough. We'll just let it begin doing its gravity turn now. We're more or less stable. One thing to warn you about is the fact that if you are using remote tech, if you put this antenna on the outside, it is very possible for it to snap off. In this case, we're, I guess, doing okay. Max Q is no more than Thirteen and a half pascals, thirteen and a half thousand pascals. That is, we're, we're not German, and the period or the decimal place is not known by a comma. But uh, this is a fairly decent deal here. I'm going to start correcting inclination because we do want to try correct it when. Orbital velocity is low. That is the easiest point to correct it. You don't really want to try to correct it too soon because it'll cause all sorts of control issues in your craft.
point, with that having been said, we'll just let gravity do its thing. This is actually quite nice for us. This is a very, in my opinion, a very successful launch with Ferrum Aerospace because that'll mean that, you know, we barely expended any effort to get on up here. We are turning over quite nicely. Our inclination is astoundingly good. We're not having to make that many corrections, which is kind of rare. And it's about here that I think I will pop the fairing. And that's, of course, so that we can bring out our solar panels and stuff like that. We can, of course, turn SAS on at this point as well, because we're out of the thickest part of the atmosphere. And we will just hold there. And try to bring up our periapsis height. You can see we still have a fair amount of delta V left, and we may actually have spare delta V. I mean, really the hardest part about launching in feral is hitting a really tight apoapsis. But I think we're going to jettison this stage. And we'll just get out of the way really quickly. It would be good if we could. The ejection force on this, unfortunately, is not the best for us, but we're going to have a problem here in a bit that I'm going to address next time. That problem deals with remote tech. I'll just give you a little sampling of it just to give you an idea of what it might be like having to deal with it. But basically, that problem is going to be how it is that we are going to circularize. In fact, I'm not going to bother really trying here because the result will be when we move into our Apple apps or to get to Apple apps and we're about ready to burn so we'll have about 39 seconds or so let's just get out of this atmosphere real quick you'll notice now we have no connection and we can try as I might I cannot move this craft but that's going to be for another video. Until then, this has been Thy Lord Root, and I will see you next time.